Hello everyone, this is the CRT Productions and in this video we're going to be taking a look at Sony's largely forgotten 2015 flagship smartphone, the Xperia Z5 Premium, and find out was Sony really so far ahead of their game that nobody could comprehend how awesome this smartphone was? Or does it really live up to its paper specs? Let's find out. Oh, the pitter-patter of rain on this tin roof always means that it's time for a CRT Productions video. Today we're going to be unboxing the Sony Xperia Z5 Premium. I'm very excited to see this phone in all of its glory. Right here on the back we've got some specs from Sony. So 0.03 second autofocus, 23 megapixel still photos. Uh, up to two days battery life, 5.5 um, inch Ultra HD display, uh, octa-core processor, and um, something else there. Alright, let's see how it goes here. going to cut the seals, you can see it right there, still sealed after all these years. We're going to break it right now, and double sealed. I'm not sure exactly where this particular model is from, but let's see. Well, there it is. There it is indeed. Here's our device right here. Let's see what kind of accessories we were given in 2015 from Sony. So we've got two little boxes here. This would appear to be a charging cable. That is the charging cable right there. And the charging brick. If we can get that sucker out. We'll take a quick look at the charging brick. See what it is. Sony. It is 5 volts. Slow charging, charging brick right there. All right, let's see what we got in here. What is this thing? Oh, little earbuds. I gave you some little earbuds. There they are. Pretty standard. Pretty standard stuff, but that was a nice thing. Back then, to get in 2015, pretty decent pair of headphones there from Sony. And it's got a little quick setup guide. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the cell phone itself. Here it is. This is, of course, what else would you get besides the mirrored finish of the uh, Xperia there. This is a dual SIM model. Very nice. Not sure if it'll still have any charge left after all these years being in the box. Huh? We've got a vibration. We've got power on. There it is. Very bright display. Very bright indeed. That 4K display. And uh, I will let the phone power up here and we'll see how much battery life is left. There it is. 100%. How do you like that? 100% battery after all that time. English United States is the default for the language, interestingly. Go ahead and get started. Ooh, the volume is loud. Turn that down a little bit. And we'll say we are aware of the important information, data charges, Xperia, approve Xperia, improve Xperia, I should say. We'll skip the SIM card for now. I don't want to copy anything. And we will not have Wi-Fi right now, so we'll just skip that. Just want to get into the UI. The current date is not 2017. There it is. There is the UI. It dropped a percent on the battery, but it's hanging in there. It is Monday, August 22nd, and this phone has been set up for the first time. So here I am just kind of sitting here 
uh, using the built-in microphone in the Sony Xperia Z5 Premium, holding it uh, just a little less than a foot away from my head at the moment. Uh, you know, we can just kind of look around the uh, look around the thing here. It's got a nice little clock, whatever that means. Okay, a little clock app. You know, yeah, it's nice. Um, I didn't realize until just a moment ago that it has the Amazon app, but when you open it, of course, it opens that because the Amazon shopping app does not support Android 7, but never mind that. Um, yeah, good thing about uh, Sony phones is that they don't have a ton of bloatware. You can see there it has a little movie editing app uh, there. We're not going to go into all of that stuff, but it doesn't have a ton of bloatware. When I first set it up, it didn't have much of anything really that um, pops up. It's got the Xperia Lounge and stuff probably doesn't work anymore. And I wouldn't worry about that. But yeah, not too bad. It has Google Apps pre-installed on there. Chrome and YouTube and whatnot, Gmail. Um, so yeah, as far as overall just, you know, look and feel. Got that. Got the wallpapers and stuff. Got plenty of wallpapers that you can choose from. And turn it off here. Let's see how quickly I can read my fingerprint there so quickly it didn't even show the uh, little, uh, little screen there before you get into it, whatever you call that. So my battery is now at 15%. I have yet to charge this phone, um, which I will show now. If I scroll back to this, the battery level you can see there, it says I last charged it 12 days ago, but that's actually just when I opened the box and turned it on for the first time. This phone is never been charged by me at least so um yeah it's made it down to 15 percent i haven't used it a ton really but you know um battery life seems to be pretty decent with this thing all things considered so there you go all right so we're recording here in 1080p and we some mario kart tour let's see how that goes So yeah, this is one of the more um, demanding maps, more graphically demanding maps in this game. Um, and it's handling it pretty well here. Um, no stutter, anything like that. It's a little awkward to play in landscape mode. You know, it's the uh, portrait mode for this game, but just trying to test it out here. And uh, yeah, working great. Recording in 1080p, of course, and uh, 30 FPS. And yeah, not bad at all. I'm not going to do too great here in the race. Hey, it's not too bad. Not too bad at all for a seven year old smartphone. Well, with all this rain, you would think I was doing a laptop showcase video. If you're not aware of those, be sure to check out my other videos on this channel. But anyway, just taking a quick look here at the Wikipedia article, I'll give you a few specs for this phone, give you an idea of what we're talking about here. It has the Qualcomm Snapdragon 810, um, which was just, that was the flagship chip at the time. Uh, that was what all flagships had. The Adreno 430 G GPU, uh, 3 gigabytes of RAM, 32 gigabytes of storage, didn't have any other um, storage options. And that just 32 gigabytes, but of course it is expandable up to 256 gigabytes with a micro SDXC card. It's a non removable 3430 milliamp battery. The rear camera uh, can record 4K video, of course, um, 1080 FPS, um, 0 0.03 seconds hybrid autofocus, an extremely fast autofocus, basically. Let's go ahead and take a closer look at that impressive 4K display. The first of its kind, Sony would like you to know. So as far as the display is concerned on this phone, it's of course a 4K UHD display. Um, 3840 by 2160. Um, but it's a 5.5 inch display. That turns out to be 806 pixels per inch, as I mentioned earlier. 806 pixels per inch. 
That is nearly double that of the uh, latest iPhones, the most recent iPhone models, which sit at around 460 pixels per inch. But you have 4K displays is silly, and there's no reason to buy this phone based off of that. But, but, this thing does have a redeeming factor, and that is going to come on the opposite side of the display side of the phone. That is going to be on the rear of the phone at the camera. This phone has a very nice and very interesting camera. Let's go out in the field and take a look at that, shall we? Alright, so I've taken a bit of time to uh, get used to the Xperia Z5 camera now and uh, I've taken some photos, just a few, um, both in 8 megapixel mode and in 23 megapixel mode. Um, so yeah, 23 megapixels, big number, they wanted to throw that out there, but uh, the 23 megapixel mode is limited. Uh, you can't do HDR, you can't do special effects, you don't really have any kind of controls, it's basically just push the button and it takes a 23 megapixel photo. Um, it may turn out okay, it probably won't, but uh, anyway, I've just got a few photos here to show you and uh, I'm going to compare them to some similar uh, shots that I took with my iPhone 6S Plus. Uh, so, we'll just scroll through these photos real quick here on the laptop. Uh, you can see this one here was not in focus. I believe that was at um, 8 megapixels. Uh, this one about the same. Uh, trying to take some close-up pictures, uh, kind of a, a test that I do with all cameras that I get when I want to test some sort of camera. I like to take close-up shots. Um, these are mushrooms, uh, in case you haven't noticed. But anyway, yeah, just something to take a picture of. This was just a random picture I took of the cat under the uh, car. So uh, yeah, I've got some comparable shots to those four uh, taken with my iPhone. You can see this one here. The iPhone does allow you to tap the screen in the spot where you want it to focus. The Xperia will do that if you're in 8 megapixel mode, but not in 23 megapixel mode. Uh, so you see here the iPhone. It's uh, heavily contrasted. It's you know, we can go into critiquing the photo with the, from the iPhone, but the point is, it's in focus. So, kind of beats this phone just by default. These pictures here are, yeah, close enough. Closer than the Xperia. And then this is the cat photo. Here are some pictures that I took at um, the 23 megapixel setting. Those other ones were at 8 megapixels again. So. This one here, another complicated lighting condition here. The uh, backlight, um, the, the subject is backlit. Um, you got the sun, you got the dark areas here. The photo turned out not to not be in focus. Um, all of these pictures, of course, are just handheld uh, as you would typically use a cell phone. This one here, I was trying to get it to focus on the light bulb. Didn't do it. It didn't do it, unsurprisingly. Um, this one here actually turned out okay. Um, it's just, you know, just kind of a, a shot of this old barn here. Um, complicated lighting with the, um, you know, light shining through the boards there. Cool shot. And then, of course, this one here. Um, that, was just, that was just an extra one I threw in. But anyway, yeah, just kind of looking at the quality of the photo here. Um, yeah, it's okay as far as the detail, you know, you get, you get some detail there, but it's the uh, 23 megapixel mode is so limited when it comes to um, the features that you can use, it's just not really worth it. So um, anyway, the video on this camera, uh, this phone's camera, is much more impressive, so I will go, go ahead and cut into some videos that I took with this phone.
So, was Sony's 2015 flagship smartphone a fail, or is it indeed a hidden gem? Well, the smartphone has a very impressive display. That is no question about that. There's no question about that. It has a very impressive display. It has a very fast fingerprint reader. Um, it has a decent camera uh, for video when it comes to still photos. Not all that impressive. And app support isn't all that great either. When it comes to Android 7, it could be worse. It could be Android 6. But obviously it's not as good as any other, um, any newer version of Android would be. So, yeah, the smartphone is pretty good. Um, it's very nice to look at. It's pretty. Um, it has a nice interface. Sony, um, you know, as far as overall look and feel, that's subjective. That's not something I want to go into too much in this video. It has a built-in camera button, which is something I wish every smartphone had. Um, it has the um, buttons for the um, volume in a very awkward spot, which is right here. All of the buttons are on the same side. There's nothing on this side um, except the SIM card slot or SIM card tray. And uh, yeah. It's just, uh, it's just a strange little smartphone, really. Um, it's a nice size. I don't like giant smartphones. I don't like tiny smartphones. So, yeah, it has a headphone jack as well. So, you know, it's not too bad. It's not too great, really. It's just, it's right there in the middle. It's, it's hard to say. I don't want to say this is a bad smartphone. Um, it's certainly cool, interesting to use, quirky. One of those things that not too many people have heard of. But anyway, let me know what you think of this smartphone in the comments. Um, leave a like and let me know if you want to see more smartphone videos from me in the future. And until next time, stay safe out there.